Welcome to the forge, my wanton wildlings. I'm your creepsmith, and I hope you like my work. Hey, wildlings. I talk a lot about that feeling that people get when they feel like they're being watched. We hate that feeling. We're all a little scoptophobic because we like our privacy. What's worse is having that feeling and not knowing what or who it is that's doing the watching. Or, in the case of tonight's story, the gazing. Tonight's unholy account of atrocity, The Murderous Confessions of a Gazer, brought to us by the talented and surprisingly nice Stupid Dial-Up on No Sleep. I am dying. To be more succinct, I am about to die. This confession is just my way of attempting to make peace with whatever options I may have on the other side. It's a worthless, typical attempt at salvation from somebody who truly does not deserve it. Truth be told, if I weren't about to die, I wouldn't be writing about any of it. I love what I do too much. Plus, I'd be killed by my people shortly after sharing this info with you all. Ironically, as menacing as I have been for the last 40 years, at the end, I find myself more pathetic than my weakest victim. There is a very old saying that information is power. It is one of the truest things that you will ever hear. I was very powerful before my illness. Not just in the way one might describe someone as powerful. My power didn't come from great wealth or brute force or political success. Even I'm not that narcissistic. My power came from harnessing the mundane and the minutia of life. I became powerful through observation and routine, through patience and planning, through cunning and camouflage. I and people like me visit your home almost every day, and you all hardly notice. We, or as you'll come to call us, the gazers, know your most intimate details. We know everything about you. When you're home, when you're not, who you're having an affair with, when you're on the rag, how many children you have, which rooms they stay in, how often you remember to lock your backyard gates, what type of medicine you take, what you like to eat and drink, who you owe money to, what types of animals you have, etc., etc. Some of you have bought us Christmas presents, baked us pies, even allowed us into your homes and into your lives. You've done all this without realizing that we are the reason that you can't find your mother's pearls. Had your car stolen, lost your beloved pet, found your father dead, or your mother raped, or your sibling kidnapped, and, well, you get what I'm saying. We, the gazers, are at your service. Literally. Garbage men, gas and electric meter men, grass cutters, etc. I was your mailman. The gazers communicate just like you do. We email, post on Reddit and 4chan, etc. We've just been so successful at hiding in public that the transfer of information, the transfer of the most fantastic details, has never been simpler. The most ubiquitous phrases that you find in short stories like these or on message boards often mean the most sinister and titillating things to a gazer. Going to the store. She wore a short red dress. It's time to put the baby down for a nap. Having roast dinner. Finally taking the kids out for ice cream. All mean much different things to me and my kind than they normally would to you. We can identify ourselves by the nicknames that we have for our specialties. If you enjoyed a little B&D or a little stalking when you stole, you were a thrifty. Enjoy a more professional approach by selling off the information you've collected to interested buyers? Well, then you sold Avon. 
kidnap women, children, and or pets, then you were a tooth fairy. As for me and people like me, they called us Picasso. Funny thing is, none of us ever saw our marks until the day the deed was done. That's what makes the system work. If five people in the last year come up butchered in my neighborhood or on my mail route, I'm not going to be in business long like I was for the last 40 years. No, you see, our power came from the information that we collected. And the better notes I took, the more information was shared back with me. The better the information, the better the pay, whether it be monetarily or a fun fact about my next victim. It was always easy to find garage or estate sales online and to sell and collect information. Information was currency, and I was a rich, rich man. Anyway, I'm not writing this to brag or to relive my exploits. My hope is that by sharing this information, maybe I'll save enough lives, spare enough heartache, and despair to get some sort of reprieve in the next life. Kind of ridiculous thought now that I'm thinking back to all that I've done. Let me leave you all with one piece of advice. Next time you see a service worker near your home, smile at him or her. No person is going to be in a good enough spirit to smile after walking in the hot sun, picking up 30 pounds of your shit for six straight hours. If that person smirks back at you, congratulations. You've just grinned at a gazer. But if that gazer smiles wide, well, you may have just welcomed a tooth fairy. Or, an equally horrifying proposition, a Picasso into your home. So remember, wildlings, it's only paranoia if they're not actually watching you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go paint over my windows and shred my records. Stay scary, wildlings. Remember, it's only a story. I hope. And make the most of your nights. <laughs> <laughs>